Hello and welcome to the first video of the Game Maker to Godot tutorial series. I've been working with Game Maker for a very, very long time and I'm not sure if you are aware of it, but Game Maker Studio One will no longer be updated. So I tried a new one, I didn't really like it. So instead of just getting the license and keep fighting with the interface and everything I don't like about Game Maker, I decided to give Godot a try and I really love it. On this tutorial series, I will be covering the differences and the things that are similar between the two. It won't be focused on making video games from scratch. So let's open both editors and let's start. So you can see here, the launchers are very similar. You can create projects, import them or whatever you want to do. The cool thing about Godot is that you have here the language that you want to use the program so you can for example set spanish and then the ui will be completely in spanish which is great if you're working with someone that doesn't exactly speaks english so yeah that's a great thing to have right here so what we're gonna do in this first video is going through the basics of where of what the interface is and what things are where so i'm gonna create an empty project in Game Maker and an empty project in Godot and I'm gonna compare them so you know where to find the stuff once you are starting with Godot. I will say it again but just in this tutorial I'm assuming you already have experience making video games so I'm not gonna go through the basics and I also assume that you know how to work with Game Maker Studio so I won't be covering those kind of details. I will just go to a transition from one program to the other. So let's open uh, an empty project. I have my one here created. So now you can see we have an empty project in Game Maker and an empty project in Godot. So you can see here, you start with a 3D engine, like with a 3D editor. So to go more into a Game Maker way, we just click here. Here's where you can toggle between the different views. This would be the room editor in Game Maker. So every time you are modifying a room you will see here the elements and where you want to place them and the script is where you just code the documents so going through the ui you can see that you have a file system tab here and an inspector here so just so you can kind of understand what these are think of it as all this organization would be located here and Every time you have properties for an object would be like this panel over here or in a room, for example, that you have this panel over here. All this information will be stored in this side of the editor. But again, it's going to be easier once we are working on it. So let's just create something very simple so you can start seeing how things work. So let's start with a simple room. In Godot, instead of rooms, you have scenes. Every scene needs to have a root node. The root node can be anything you like. So for this example, I'm going to use just a 2D scene, which is very, very basic. Once you have the node parent, you can save this one, save this scene as, let's say, my first scene. And I can test the game and you will see that the game just runs and you can see a window. A cool thing about Godot is that instead of testing the whole project as you do in Game Maker, when you press the play button, you have this button here which will only play the room that you currently have open. So remember, instead of rooms, we have scenes and you can play them one by one if you want. So now let's just do a basic introduction to what the code looks like and how you can do some keyboard input. As you can see here, I have some resources. I have the icon. This is always included in new projects and it's it's great just for testing things out. And I can drag and drop it here and it will tell me if I want to create something. I, I just want the sprite in the screen, which will be like creating an empty object in Game Maker with the sprite set to this icon. So now we have it here. As you can see, here it is. And the properties for this object which objects in Godot are called nodes. Remember, they are not the same, but it's just a way for you to understand what things are. So the properties would be here. Here you have 
the position where it is, the scale, the depth, and all those kind of properties that you will have in the regular game maker here. Let's gonna add some code. In game maker, you have events. So everything is run by an event. And if we want to do some input, you can either use the key press event or the step event. The same could be done in Godot. So I'm gonna go with the step event. I create the step event and I have to go to control and drag the code so I can start coding. So now we are here and I would do something like if keyboard check down, I want to add to the Y variable and if keyboard check up, I would do the opposite. So it goes up. Okay. So this would be the basic process that you're used to doing. And let's do the same now with Godot. Press here to add a script or right click, attach a script and it would do the same. And now you have to set the language that you want to use and the name of that file. Right now it will take the name of the node and call it icon.gd. So just go ahead and you can see that you have the code editor open. So instead of selecting the events that you have in Godot, you can code all the events in one big text file. So to do the same as we did with the game maker example, it's the process function. On this basic template, it has like a placeholder for things so we can delete what we don't, what we are not gonna use and keep what we want, which is the process. Process is similar to what the step event is in game maker. So one thing that we will notice is that the syntax is a little bit different. The language is different. It's called GD script. It's very similar to Python, but it has some differences. But if you're used to game maker, most of the things are kind of similar. The biggest difference is the brackets. You don't really need brackets to code here. I'm going to try to link to a tutorial for GD script because I don't want to get into coding tutorials right now. I just want to do exactly the same as we did in game maker, but with Godot. So how do you do the, the checking of the keyword? First, one thing that I really like is that you can set global, you know, how like here you have the VK up and VK down. Those are things that you have to memorize or you have to look on the documentation to know. And imagine that you have a big file, you already coded those things a lot and you want to do some customization on the input for the player. It gets a mess. You have to go searching for all these instances of VK down or any other key that you use. In Godot, you have in the properties of your project, which are here in project settings, the input map, which is a name, like a variable name to handle the input. And one action can have different input devices. So for example, if you want to do the same logic with a joystick and a keyboard, you can do so. If you have a big project, chances are that you already created something like this in the game maker IDE, just so you have the same functionalities. Let's create the move down action and the move up. And now I'm going to set keys. You can press here and select you want to use a key. So to go down, I will press the down key on my keyboard. And when I have it, I can confirm. Same with the up. I press the up keyword and yeah, the up key, not the up keyword, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so now we have them and let's gonna check for them. If input is action pressed would be like the same one like is keyword pressed in game maker is action press now the name of the action so you can see it already knows all the actions that we have in our settings so you can use the autocomplete here and i'm using the down and up keys here and then enter to select one so i'm gonna use the for example move down i close this and 
I change the position dot y and I do the same. So you can see you cannot access the y directly. You have to use the position variable. Think of it in GameMaker like having an object called position that you that it has this variable name. And let's try it out. So you press down and press up and it works the same as in Game Maker. So to know the name of those variables, I create a GitHub repository with all the different finds, all the different names and equivalents of how you would do things uh, in Godot. So if you want to know, for example, how to create a, a draw a rectangle, you know that in GML you do it like this, in Godot you do it like that, and I add some examples so you can compare. So it's very useful for me, especially when I was learning the, the equivalent names uh, to check here. You can, you know, control F and do, I don't know, how you delete an object. So I tap delete and here you have instant destroy. So I can, okay, I know that GML instant destroy is this function, how to do it in Godot. And yeah, that's very useful to have. Back to the code, if you want to go back to the room editor for calling it something like that, you can go here to the 2D tab and here you have the scene and everything. So now I'm gonna add the other keys that I wanted to use so we can move in all directions. So you can see here this number one is the speed. So if you want to use a variable in Game Maker, you can create them in the create event. So in Game Maker, let's say that we want to create the variable movement speed to be two. And now here I know I can use movement speed to access that variable instead of using a number. In Godot to create a variable that you can access from anywhere, any event, you have to do it here between the extends and the function you have. So you can create, for example, the same would be var movement speed equals two. And now I can use this variable name to control it and you can see it go faster. So instead of doing the create event for declaring the variables, you declare them outside. One last thing that I want to go to that is very useful at the beginning, especially when you're learning, is the documentation. In Game Maker, I'm sure you know that if you press the middle key, you jump to the definition of that particular function. So you can check an example and you can see what the properties are or any useful thing you might know and to do something similar to that in Godot is you press control and then your mouse converts everything into a clickable thing so for example is action press you click it and you go to the definition of that in the documentation this is very useful especially when you are reading other people's code and you want to know a bit more of what are the functions arguments or what things do, it's a very good way to know what you're actually doing. As you can see here are all the document files that you have open and you can toggle them, think of them as tabs. And I think that's it for the introduction of the series. I will go more into detail of different nodes and how to achieve the same kind of things in Game Maker and Godot. But if there's something that you want me to cover, just leave a comment below with what you would like to see and I will do my best to address all the questions that you might have. Thanks for watching. Bye.